free to talk about it. That's the way it ought to be. And you ought to support your country. As somebody said the other day, either support the country you live in or go live in the country you support. Take care of the college rights. They don't like it. Go support the country. Go live in the country you do support. That's it's your right to do that. Now, you don't have to. It's your right. Amen. All righty. Now, we're going to open our Bibles this morning uh, to uh, the book of 2 Timothy. And look here at some uh, scripture here in the book of 2 Timothy uh, right quickly this morning. And I'll, I'll just say a few things about this and, and we'll, we'll go. Now, the um, Memorial Day originally, originally originated the first 19, actually even before that, uh, back in the 1800, 1868, when they remembered those who had died in active service of our country. And at that time, it was designated as May 30th for many, many years. And then several years ago, the devil told our government to put all these holidays on Monday. And they switched them to all Monday, about 30, 25, 30 years ago. That was to give people long weekends, keep them out of church. And uh, when you get that extra day, everybody wants to take off, and that keeps them out of church. God ain't in a million miles of that. And, uh, but anyway, it is now the fourth Sunday in May. So we commemorate today on uh, which those who have died in active military service uh, be remembered. It began like most of our holidays, with a lot of Christian roots as a decoration. I remember when I was a little kid, every year we'd go to the decoration up in Spruce Pine where my mom's family, many of them were buried, the little Zion, Mount Zion Methodist Church, way up on top of a big old hill in Spruce Pine. And they would decorate the graves of, of our, our family. And Memorial Day began like that, decoration and a remembrance of those that were fallen in battle. Now, there have been since then many, 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 many more. Uh, in 1938, 150,000 people watched President Roosevelt devote or dedicate the Eternal Light Monument uh, on Oak Hill. And 20 years later, we received those two coffins uh, that came back from a uh, place like. Uh, Japan, uh, Korea, and uh, World War II, World War I, and they called it the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And there's some of them guys, they some of them body parts shipped back, they didn't know who it was. Some of them, they wasn't enough left to ship back. They're out there somewhere in the, in the ocean, the remains of their bodies. And as I said a minute ago, some of them went rushing right smack into battle. We, we can't imagine that. We've never seen nothing like that. You see it in movies and stuff, but it's all glamorized and Hollywooded up, and you, you know who's going to win when it starts. It, it ain't like that in real life. Somebody said war is hell. The closest thing you'll ever be in hell in this world is being in war. And uh, I, my, my hat's off to them. Most of y'all heard about, just this week, a young missionary, David Lloyd, his wife, Natalie, were murdered in Haiti. How many of y'all heard about that? It was all over. People, uh, people, I don't know how many people sent it to me. They were in service of, of the Lord and, as being a missionary in Haiti and were murdered by gangs just this week. They were in the Lord's army and gave their life for service. And the Apostle Paul was a soldier, no doubt about it. Look here what he said in First. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 6. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure, he's getting ready to die, his head cut off, is at hand. He knew it was coming. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. See, God don't do like we do. Everybody don't get a trophy. 
I don't know where that philosophy comes from. That the Lord don't do that. He hands out rewards where they're deserved. And it's not salvation. It's free to everybody. But in God's army, everybody don't get a trophy. You mess around, fool around, act stupid. You, you ain't going to get one. Uh, a, a crown. I'm not talking about going to heaven. A crown. The righteous judge shall give me it that day. And not to me only, but on all them that love, also that love his appearing. And this the Apostle Paul said right before they cut his head off his body. He gave his life in the service of the Lord, in the Lord's army. My goodness, uh, what, a, what, a, what a blessing, what an inspiration that is. I want to talk about that just a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, they say it's better to fight for something than to die for anything or nothing. Ain't that right? And uh, I, I'm like that, that, old, that song said, I think I heard Brother Mike quoting it in Sunday school. It said, uh, uh, and I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died or gave their life so that me and you could be free. I'm going to stand up. I don't know Lee Greenwood or nothing about him, but I'm telling you that's the, some right way to think. And that's a good way. We ought to thank God. Uh, I am a Christian first. I am a Christian first above everything else. After that, uh, we're, I, I'm a Bible-believing Baptist preacher. And after that, I'm an American citizen. And I thank the Lord this morning for that. I thank God for letting us li be born where we're born. We not only live in the greatest country in the world, we live in the greatest part of that country. Right here in the in the Blue Ridge Mountains. I mean, yeah, listen, I've been I I'm like I'm like old Johnny Cash. I've been everywhere, man. I've I've been there. Little 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 Nebo, little 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 Amen. And look at the scenery and, and, and cook out and enjoy uh, the blessings of God. Uh, uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful place. I've seen them mountains out in Colorado. I preached in Montana. And the preacher took me out there and said, look at that. Ain't that beautiful preacher? And I said, well, I guess. It's all brown. There ain't no trees. I said, honestly, it looks like the moon. And uh, he, he said, uh, well, that's prettier. You're taller than your mountains. I said, no, they ain't. Yeah, Mount Mitchell ain't but 6,000, 6,600 6, feet, and that mountain right there is 12. And I said, but the problem to that is, preacher, is a level ground here is six. So it's still only going up six. Amen. No trees, no flowers. Lord, have mercy. Uh, thank God for where he's let us live. Thank God for what we've got here in this far. And not to mention Bible preaching churches all over the place. Glory to God, people. Thank the Lord for His blessings on us. You know, they say that we lost 300,000 troops in World War, II, World War II. Think about that. Some of them come home in body bags. Thousands of mothers got the news that they'd never see their boy again. Amen. It's not a celebration. It's a commemoration of honor to those that gave life. And then you can translate that right over into a Christ, being a Christian because the Lord, our great captain of our salvation, paved the way before us and He Himself gave His life in service for the Lord Jesus Christ, or being the Lord Jesus Christ in, in, in honor of God Almighty. And me and you have that example to follow. Now I want to say a few things about that this morning. If these brave men and women could come back, I wonder, I wonder those that that that. that perished in, in the wars could come back and let them have the microphone, let them be on then I'll, I'll guarantee you they'd have some choice words for this uh, wicked, low-down outfit uh, that's running our country. They'd have, they'd have, you'd be sure they'd have a mouthful of disgust for our present state of leaders and politicians uh, uh, to our weak, need, money, loving, power, hungry outfit that don't even love our country and selling it out from under us. They'd have a mouthful. I guarantee you that. Uh, they, you know what they'd say? They'd say, we didn't die and give our life so that you could make America a socialist, communistic state like China and let them buy out all of our businesses. 
We didn't die so that our nation could turn um, turn away from its Judeo-Christian roots. Not saying that all our founding fathers were Christian, but our roots, brother, and the foundation of this country was built on this book right here. That can be proved any day of the week. They didn't die so that we could turn America into an Islamic nation and, and pay for mosques to be built. They didn't die so that you could um, sell all of our businesses and industry to countries that don't even, uh, 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 that hate us and knock Americans out of work and 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 like I was doing, look, hey, they didn't die so that the government could take away from people that make a lot of money and give it to people that won't work. That ain't why they died. That ain't why they died. Listen, we're being had, y'all, uh, by this modern day. They they didn't die so that our kids and grandkids would have to grow up into a into a wicked and perverted, uh, gender confused, drunken, atheistic, blasphemous nation uh, that that hates God. That ain't why they died. They died so that Americans could teach their kids right and have the freedom to honor God and serve Him. Amen. That's what somebody said. If you don't like standing behind the troops, stand in front of them. See, they like that uh, for a little while. <laughs> right? That's right. Thank the Lord. Uh, I want to talk about that this morning and say just a couple of things spiritually. He's already covered it very good. Uh, number one, I want to talk about the, the awfulness of sin. The awfulness of sin. You know, that's what caused all wars? Sin. And there will always be wars until sins got rid of. And there'll never be a time on this earth when there's peace on earth until the Prince of Peace comes and sits on the throne and makes that peace. Ladies and gentlemen, the awfulness of sin. The death of God's Son was because of sin. I read a story about this woman up in Kentucky years ago before everybody had running water. And uh, she, was, she was real thirsty and went out in the, the back of her, her little uh, cabin there in the mountains and dipped water out of the well. Now, some of you maybe never remember uh, when people don't well. But I, I remember my grandma, when I was little, they still had a well, and they had a rope run all the way into it, and they had a bucket down there. And you crank that up, and we it just we loved it. I was five or six years old. We'd go to Grand, Grandma Bean's house, and uh, and then I, mean, I had a, an, an aunt also that had that, and it just seemed like that was the best tasting, coldest water. Anybody ever seen them do that? Raise your hand. Okay, there's still old some dinosaurs in here beside me. And uh, 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 it, we drink that water. Well, this woman went out and she got, she took her a, a cup of that water and you had a, a dipper, like a little metal tin made out of tin and you held like that and you dipper and boy, that is the best water in the world. And you know, uh, she took that and there was a little tiny spider in that and it's so little she didn't even realize she drank it and drank it. And that little spider got in her, her throat, in her stomach, and in one hour, in one hour, late at night, her flesh began to swell. She got very nauseous. Her arms and her legs began to swell up. Her tongue got so thick that she could not talk. And her ears swelled so bad, it poisoned her. And her ears swelled so bad, the skin broke and blood uh, run down her face. Poisoned her. And they took her to the doctor. And the doctor somehow gave her a, a, a medicine to, 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 to fix it. And saved her life. And she come that close of dying. A little tiny spider. Now that's a picture of sin. That's a picture of sin. A little bitty sin. People say, well, it's just a little sin. I just do a little bit once in a while. I you know, I fool around here and I know it ain't right. But I, I listen, all it takes is a little bitty sin to kill you. All sin. There ain't no such thing as a little sin. All sins are big sins. Just some are bigger than others. And I'm going to tell you something. You know, spider, everybody's seen snakes. I seen two in the yard the other day in 30 minutes. Uh, big black and about that long. And then right down the bottom of the hill, a big brown fat one went in the drain pipe down there. Uh, and uh, there I seen them too. And I mean, you know me, I hate four kinds of snakes, buddy. Little ones, big ones, live ones, and dead ones. And, uh, and uh, uh, I think there's something wrong with you if you like snakes. You ain't, something ain't right with your brain, buddy. Amen. I, I, that's right. That's a picture of the devil, you nut. 
And anyway, uh, they, they, uh, uh, the spiders are even scarier because you can't see them. Lord, I've had people tell me, said, Lord, I'm more scared of a spider. I don't know, you know, there's a little bitty tiny thing like that. We came home one night and, and went in the back room where, where a washer and dryer is, and there was a big one. I mean, I don't know how. I mean, some of them they get that big around, and it was on the wall there. And I'm telling you, my Kelly, I thought she'd had a heart attack. She's back there in the junior church. She went, ah! <laughs> I thought, Lord, I'm Frankie about started crying. And, and, and I said, it's just a spider. Get it! Get it! I took the broom, and I went like that, and, and that's what you're supposed to do to sin. And I hit it like that, and, and it fell down behind the washing machine. I said, I got it. She said, no, no, it's still alive. It's still alive. I said, well, he, he crippled. He ain't going he, he to know where. I, I broke eight or nine of his legs. And and he and she said no, no, she nothing else would do her. We had to drag the washing machine, wiggle it out. I mean, she was not going to. I, you know, a cripple spider ain't he, he'll die in there, bleed to death or something. And uh, and and we wiggled that thing out and finally got it. And then we seen one out on the pool. At the big old, you know, them things can walk on water. They get, and and it was going across the water like that. And as I got the strainer. And picked him up out of the pool and threw him down over here and just smite. And about a thousand little bitty ones come out of it. I thought, oh, Lord have mercy. Good night in the morning. And I, I, I'm, I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher. So I start preaching in my head. That's that one little drink. That's that one little smoke. That's that one movie. That's that one. You know what sin will do? Sin will get inside you, brother. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. It's death. How awful sin is. And our captain, our soldier in command, our commander in chief walked up to the cross. One day, stuck out willingly. They didn't take his life from him. He willingly laid it down and said, I'll pay for this. For every sin that Danny's got. For every sin that you've got. And I've got. And all of us have got. It's the awfulness of sin, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad for he paid the price. All the tears. All the heartaches. All the hospital rooms. All the funeral homes. All the cuts. All the blood. All the sickness. All the prisons, all the uh, uh, because the deaths and the bills and the divorce courts and the toothaches and the and the bruises and the cuts and the and, and all the things that I heard about down here in Florida years and years ago. Back years ago, they'd have them little gas stations, and when them little old gas stations go out of business, somebody just just either just bulldoze it down or they'd turn it into a uh, you know a little old fruit stand or something like that. And before the the government started making them. Dig up all the tanks and stuff like that, you know, crazy, you know. Uh, you know, you might poison a worm on the extinct list or something. And uh, uh, they said these guys got in there and they dug up this tank and they could smell gas. And while they're sitting there, one of them lit up, lit up a cigarette and did a spark hit that thing and blew that guy in two. I mean, blew him in two pieces. And he said the other one was escaped and he said that he left that. And he, he, he began to, that blew his buddy to pieces. And he looked at it and he thought, just that one little spark. That one little spark. Now look, blew that man's life up. You don't know how many girls' life just this past weekend. That one little night after the prom. How many young men got themselves in trouble? One night at a party for graduation. The world beats it in their head. Well, you're graduating. You're only young ones. You're not going to live like this. Go to the beach. Get drunk. Get all, that. all it takes is that one little sin to get in your life and set the course for you ruining your whole life. Amen? You girl, you know what you better do? When that old boy starts coming around talking that junk, you better do like Kelly. Ah! Kill him, Mother Daddy! I'll bop him in the head, brother. That's right. You better. It's funny to me. You better be scared more of that guy than you are a, a, a brown recluse or whatever them things are. You, you better be more scared of that girl 
You better watch out, boys. I'm telling you, uh, that's poison in pretty form, like a snake. I'm telling you this morning, the awfulness of sin. But not only that, it shows us the greatness of God's love. The greatness of God's love. Amen. I like what Lester Roloff used to sing. Uh, God love goes deeper, deeper than the stain of sin. Amen. Deeper than the stain of sin. You know, there's a great preacher in this country years ago named Henry Morehouse. And old Henry Morehouse started preaching when he was 16. And he died, I think, in his 40s. Great was a great preacher. And they said he had a very unique ministry because every time he preached, he preached on John 3, 16. Honestly, every time. Literally thousands of times. And he never, it didn't matter. He'd start with John 3, 16. And he never got it exhausted. You could preach on that one verse forever and never get it all out of there and never get it all. You say, Brother Danny, what? see, I mean, he'd go into other stories in the Bible, but he launched off of John 3 16 and hit it. You know what the old preachers used to say? They used to say, No matter where you start preaching, start on your story and cut a trail toward Calvary and wind up there. They had the love of God. The love of God, how rich and pure, how marvelous. And the, I used to like that song that said, had it not been for a, a place called Mount Calvary, had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for a man called Jesus, then my soul would forever be lost. Listen, I was 18 years old that night. I come and got saved. The Lord washed my sins away. He changed me. He made me a brand new person. My record's clear today before He washed my sins away. The old account was settled long ago. And I'm glad this morning He still loves me. He loved me. You might not, but He does. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, amen. He loves me. He loves me. Ah, I can't stand that Denny Cow. Well, too bad. The devil can't either. That shows whose side you on. I'm going to tell you something this morning, brother. He loves me. He loves me when I'm up. He loves me when I'm down. He loves me when I'm sideways. He loves me when I'm going straight. He loves me, brother, when I wake up in the morning and when I lay my head to sleep. He loves me when, I, when, I'm, when I'm sad. He loves me when I'm glad. He loves me when I'm happy. He loves me when I'm upset. He loves me when my faith is weak. He loves me when my faith is strong. He loves me when I got the victory. He loves me when the devil knocked me down in the mud. I'm telling you, it tells the love of God is the greatest thing in this world. Sin is powerful, but the love of God is more powerful. Jesus went to the cross and, and gave his life. See, like them soldiers gave their life so we could run around in here and holler amen. Jesus gave his life so we could have the peace in our heart and the forgiveness to be able to do it. Amen. The cost of salvation, number three, and I'll be through. He died on the battlefield. He gave it all. A lot of them boys thought, I'm probably going to die today. A lot of them boys thought, I got a wife and kids back home. I'll never see them again. Ain't no doubt about that. There's accounts told, the boys, this is it. And you know, they don't fight. They fight wars on computers nowadays for the most part. But back then, buddy, it was hand to hand. I mean, it's swords and guns and knives and rocks and whatever you get your hands on. They went in there and they began to fight. And they thought, Lord, I'm doing this for my wife and my baby's back home. And I hope they grow up to love and appreciate it. And so their wife and kids, you know, somehow or another we've lost that kind, of, that kind of attitude in our heart. It's our guys now won't even support their wives and kids. Get a job and pay for the diapers. Or bills. These people gave their life so that their wife and kids could live. His body. He gave his body. Not an, God didn't say, okay, I'm going to take the, 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 the best angel in heaven and let him die for you. God didn't say, I'm going to take one of the great prophets in, in heaven, Moses Elijah, and send them down. He gave the jewel of heaven, the only one that never sinned, never would sin. And, and brother, they plowed his back. I, amen. I, and they, they run their furrows up his back like you'd take a tiller and tiller up your garden and run it so me and you could be saved. They plowed it. Uh, brother, he came through. And ladies and gentlemen, if Jesus gave his life for us, the least we can do is honor him and give our life for him. 
I've told that story. I've told it many times. But I'm telling you, I, it never gets, get, it fails to get me under conviction. I thought about it yesterday. And they said this missionary was over in Africa doing mission work. And he's over there and he watched those people in some of them countries and their heathen beliefs and practices. Some of them worship devils. Some of them worship all kinds of gods that they've made. And he said that, that one certain tribe said they, they would worship their gods and it was a custom of their tribe to take their firstborn son and take it to the river and throw that child in the river and sac- give it to the crocodiles in honor of their God. And they thought, they thought that if they did that, that their God, whoever, whatever God they believed in, would bless them and prosper them and keep them good health and give them food. Now, the first thing you ask is, where'd they get the idea like that? Isn't it weird that those heathen tribes, they'd never even seen a missionary. And they thought, if I give my son the deity up there somewhere, is going to bless Where'd that come from? The devil. See, Satan, he hates God. He hates the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. So he wants to counterfeit that. God really did give his son for them people. And here they are giving their son and the devil's life. is Look at there, God. Look at there. They're willing to give their child up for me. Your kids won't even get up and go to church if they got a little bit of a headache. Look at that, God. They're giving their children for me. Your kids out at the lake on Sunday. Look, God. Look what they're doing for me. Your kids don't, won't even get up and go to, go to church on a regular Sunday morning. And they did. And finally, he asked one of them. He said, why y'all do this? They said, because our gods will bless our crops and our, our, our efforts and our health and God's going to help us. So you know what? He said he saw a woman come down there one time and said she had had two babies, twins. And they said that obviously being in a country like that, they didn't have doctors and nurses and stuff. And it was obviously one of those kids was very, very sick. The other one was perfect health. She came down there the river, the rest of them. And he said, I stood there and watched that woman take that perfectly healthy baby and throw that in there in them crocodiles. He said, I couldn't believe it. He said, I couldn't help it. He said, ma'am, why in the world you do that? And why throw that one in? She said, I don't know how you people worship your God. But we believe that our God deserves our very best. Now she's crazy. She's crazy for doing that. But her devotion to her God was he deserved the best. And I'm going to tell y'all something people. I love y'all. You're the best people in the world to me. Listen, some of y'all need to get get your act together. If a heathen person can give God their child, they want Surely, Lord, me and you can give God our best. Amen? Amen. Surely to the Lord, we can give God our best. Just like appreciating our freedom, not taking for granted, let's appreciate what Jesus did for us and start doing something. If that don't make you live right, I don't know nothing that will. I don't know about you this morning, but I want to tell the Lord, Lord, I want to give you my best. Not the leftovers. Not once in a while I'll show up. Not, not I, I'll give a little bit here and there. Lord, I'm going to give you my best in honor of Him. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Heads bowed, and eyes are closed. Nobody's talking. Nobody's moving. Maybe you're here this morning. You say, "Preacher, I've been fooling around halfway." living right and every time I pray I don't do better and then I don't then I pray and I'm going to do better and then I don't good welcome to the Christian life that's the way we all are that's the way we all are God help us this morning to get our life down here on this altar and say Lord by your grace by your grace something's already coming something's already coming come on ma'am come on sir let God speak to your heart right now Father I thank you Lord for all you've done for us thank you for paying the awful cost the ultimate price so that we could be saved. 
and have eternal life. Bless everybody here this morning. I pray the Holy Spirit of God would speak to somebody's heart today. Save that one which is lost. Touch every Christian here this morning. Send us out of here to live for you and serve you and do right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 One in sin. Amen. Amen. Let's get in this hall this morning. Say, you know what, preacher? You know what, preacher? He deserves my best. He deserves my best. He don't want second. He don't want third. He deserves my best. He deserves my best. You come right now. Come on. Come on right now. Amen. That's right. Glory to God. Amen. Woo! Yeah, thank God. New converts in the altar. Those new converts in the altar. This never satisfy. The yeah, price man. of sin was yeah. just too Glory to God. High. Yeah. Yeah, man. Think of the price he paid this morning. Think of the price he paid. Take it all the way. way. But this man was holy sin. Yeah. This man Will you come this did morning? not deserve it. This man gave yeah. it all to set me free. That's right. Come on, young lady. Come on, ma'am. Come on, let's get out of here. This man. No one else could ever love me like he can. You need to come. Come on, run now. but this man. Amen. Amen. While they sing, you need to come this morning. Come on. Be a good time to move right now. How about it, young lady? Young man, are you right with God? Are you right with God? If you're not, come on. Come on. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The battle raging darkness fell as a victory. Yes. Amen. 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 Yeah, you come on now. But this man reigns forever. This man yeah. changes never. Hooray. This man Hooray. doesn't get a victory. Amen. 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 And this man with his blood divine settled Amen. it for all time. And now he lives to intercede for me. Hallelujah. No one else could ever love yeah. me like he can. Give it all to him. Give him the best. Thank God, this Jimmy. This man yeah. reigns forever. Woo. This man changes right. ever. This man doesn't oh, get a big glory. Today, by the grace of God. By the grace of God. And this man right, with you, his blood divine said, Oh, get back in there. Get back in there. all time, and now he lives to intercede for me. No one else could ever love me like he can. None but this man. She's playing softly while they still pray him. Somebody need to get back in church. Been backslid. Need to get back in church. I'm telling you, something's coming down the road. It'll ring your bell loud and clear. And it's good to be in church when something like that happens. It's coming to all of us. Stay in the safe place. Stay in the safe place. So when it comes, you'll say, Lord, I'm glad you're in this with me. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. Oh, Jimmy there. Ain't that a blessing to see him in there in church? What about that? He's get, he wants to take the bus driver's course so he can drive that bus that got his family in here. Amen. What about a blessing, y'all? Amen. We need bus drivers. We need, bus, we need people that care about other people. 
or care about other people. Frankie graduated from kindergarten yesterday. To me, it's, it's ridiculous. I know people don't like me saying that. That's ridiculous. You ain't, gonna, you ain't done nothing to go kindergarten. But, uh, but <laughs> I didn't even go to We didn't even have to go to kindergarten. Wasn't no such thing. You know what I believe? I ain't never heard nobody else believe this, but I believe I believe there's only 12 years of school. All them years, and they done all right when they honored God, and 12 apostles, 12, and then they kicked God out in the early 60s, and added on another year and made it 13. That's what I think. And now look at the mess they got. But anyway, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Uh, but um, they the teacher made the statement about Frankie and she said one of the things that stood out to me about Frankie was that if he saw a kid that was hurt or saw a kid that was uh, didn't get picked to play or something he'd go to him and try to be a friend to him you know where he learned that on the bus route to church learn to care about other people I, we always tell him Frankie if somebody's making fun of somebody don't you do it if some boys are beating you make them leave them alone take up for people take up for people that are less fortunate Take up people that don't look good or smell good, or take up, be nice to people, y'all. Uh, we're in a we're in a very selfish, selfish generation. Amen. All right, all right. Here's what we're gonna do. Now, now look. We also maybe plan on going street preaching Friday night. Uh, and all the preachers ready to preach, fired up, and go over to Little Nor and hit the streets for a while. But we're not sure about that. We're gonna wait on the weather situation. We'll announce that Wednesday and have uh, take signs. And, Take the, uh, the the choir and whoever will go. We'll sing, preach, and give out tracks Friday night. Uh, not sure about that, but we'll we'll see how the weather is. And uh, we we'll always do it on Saturday, but we'll do it Friday night. And we'll sing, take the signs, and all have a big time if if the weather cooperates with us. Uh, if the Lord wants us to go. And then uh, of course this evening, six o'clock special night tonight. So all the kids need to be here tonight. Got something really special surprise coming for them. It's going to be good. So you got all evening to loafer, and you got all day tomorrow to cook your hot dog. Uh, we'll not, uh, as of now, we are not going to have the church picnic because it's seventy percent chance of rain. So we can't ride through the mountains with the four wheelers. But we might come on anyway. I uh, will announce that tonight and just have, have basketball and stuff. But as of now, uh, we'll not have the big cookout. Okay, sorry, but it ain't looking good for tomorrow. All right, all hearts clear. Six o'clock this evening. Don't miss it. Amen. Let's pray. Bow our heads and have a word of prayer, and we'll be dismissed. But Jeff, dismissed.